Let me explain something. To the Muslim, if he if he's thinking about the afterlife, it's what he wants. You know, remember the saying, we love death more than you love life? That's what the PLO's saying used to be. It's because dying as a martyr is superior to living an uneventful life. They think they're going to go to heaven. Not every, but the, the, the religion, technology hollows out religion. And more people, regardless of religion, want to live nice lives in a technological world than want to live miserable, violence-filled lives because a book says so. I'm sorry, but you don't have any proof for that. I wish it was true. Yeah, there's proof. There's statistical proof. 1.3 billion Muslims, 30,000 assholes in ISIS. Yeah, but, but you have to understand, if you, if you polled those 1.7 billion Muslims, they will say that the majority of them will say that they believe that you should be killed if you don't uh, follow certain laws of the, of the Sharia. They, they still believe that. They have, they have advanced weaponry. They have cell phones. They have, uh, you know, uh, well, the internet. Well, let's go back, they, to, let's still, go back to Iran. They still believe their religion. Nothing's right. changed Before about Before the Iranian Revolution. Yes. And you, you're going to agree with some of this. Iran was one of the most westernized nations in the Mideast. It, it was nice, except for... Um, the Shah and Savik, like torturing and disappearing people. Right. Um, but super Western. People dressed Western, they did Western stuff. Right. And, and then the, the Ayatollahs take over. Right. But you still have, because you just, a population that likes Western life. And you just said it that there are all these secret atheist clubs and, and, well, yeah, people can, people can change, but we have to help them change. You can't just wait for it to happen because they get better cell phones. We have to demoralize them. Well, you're saying don't spare the rod, and a liberal would say, well, maybe also be a friendly beacon. Yeah, it's, it's not going to work. They're, they're living here and they're attacking us. They, they live with us. Some of them get college education and then blow us up. You know, it, it, what, what we have to do is a concerted effort. Yeah, but if every you way look at stuff statistically. To get them to, grip, to give up their religion. Look, let me explain. There has been a resurgence of, called, uh, of what is known as Wahhabism. The, the, it, the Wahhabi religion is the most orthodox Muslim religion, and that's the one where they say, you know, if you're not killing people, you're not a nice person. If you're not killing unbelievers. How many Wahhabis are there? Well, that began, I believe, in the 1920s. And it, it was actually founded by a guy that, that came to America at some point and saw how corrupt we were. And so he went back to, uh, I believe it was Saudi Arabia, and he started the Wahhabi sect. But that is the sect that is prominent now. That and when and you say the prominent, Ayat how many Wahhabis are there? Well, it's spreading. The, how it, many Wahhabis? I are don't there? know the number. A but, million? But I, Two million? I, I don't know the number, but because they don't, it's not a thing where everyone gets together and says we're Wahhabi. What it is is it's a philosophy that has become prevalent. When, it, you, know, when words, you say words the, like the, prevalent, Wahhabi, well, Wahhabism is basically this. It's, the, the, it, it's like a movement that says we need to fight, that Islam needs to, be, uh, needs to go back to its traditional uh, goal, and that was to make the world believe in Islam and submit to it, and, or, or die. That be, you, get, you, you get three choices. You can die, you can submit, or you can pay the jizya. You can become a dimmy. You know what a dimmy is? I assume it's somebody who, it's like somebody in the Civil War who paid somebody else to go to war for No, him. that's not what it is. Okay. A dimmy is a Jew or a Christian. They let the Jews and Christians live, historically, but they had to pay an enormous tax so that they lived in poverty. And also, they could be brutalized. Like, for example, if you saw a Jew or a Christian walking down the street, you could beat them up. You could maybe rape their, their women. 
um, that was the, they were they were their lives were so miserable that they eventually became Muslim. So that's how a country like Turkey or Egypt, that were both Christian countries, Turkey and Egypt were Christian countries. That's how they became predominantly Muslim, because they were brutalized. The the Christians were so persecuted. So you had so the, right, the right. so the point is is that that the traditional Islam is to fight, to dominate, and to submit. But most and most Muslims weren't practicing it. So now that they're feeling, it's it's like a religious revival. But it's still a minority movement. No, it's not a minority it, it is. because because every country in the world where they take polls, Pew Research, P E W Research has done polls, and most Muslims believe in, in, in things like killing people for leaving the religion, that Sharia should be the law of the land in, 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 in Christian countries. Do you know, the, the, for example, the, the, the Muslims that live in, live in Britain, the majority believe that, that Islam should take over Britain. I mean, they, they believe in, they're still stoning people for, for uh, adultery all over the Muslim world. You know, they, they burn people alive in some of these countries. You say, well, they're not coming after us. Well, no, but they're burning people alive. They're oh. burning women alive if they walk out with their with shorts on. I've seen it. Right. And now, I've, now, I've seen now, stories. Seen but, it too. But, but, they, but what I'm saying is that means that if, if, for example, Indonesia had an atom bomb, there'd be a lot of temptation to use it. I, I don't think so. Well, you're, you know what? I can't make my foreign policy based on your hopes. 